Hi everyone. In this video, I will be showing you how to enter declaration data into your local CDS instance using a comma separated values or CSV file. This method of entering declaration data is one of many ways you can enter declarations in CDS. You can find details of other ways in other CDS videos and the CDS product documentation. After you've watched this video, you can have a go at building your own CSV files and importing them to CDS using the sample files linked in the description below this video. Importing declarations from CSV files is useful for organisations who need to import declarations created by customers in another system into CDS in order to generate IT map messages. This approach has some limitations, however. CSV files are not optimised for importing multiple levels of information. One line corresponds to one content piece. So, for example, if you have multiple content pieces for a given declaration, all other fields such as sender details, recipient details and so on are duplicated for each content piece. Also, you can only use this feature if you are a CDS Master Administrator with full access to the CDS database. In the video, we are going to look at the prerequisites for running the CSV import job, the types of files you can import, and how to import CSV files successfully. I will also show you what happens if you encounter errors during the import process. First, we need to configure CDS to import CSV files. We need to run a script to create an import job in the CDS database. The script creates a job called Import Outbound Data from CSV. You can obtain a copy of this script by contacting the Postal Technology Centre at the UPU. After you run the script, next you need to log in to CDS as Master Administrator. We'll open the Manage Jobs function and find the Import Outbound Data from CSV job in the table. Let's click Edit and have a look at the details of the job. We can update the source folder of the file to be imported. The file can be placed in any folder on your local drive as long as the user running the Windows CDS service has read-write access to the folder. You can also update the frequency with which the import job is run. This is currently once a minute. CDS also includes a couple of configuration parameters for specifying characters in the file. You can set the wrap character and the character that separates the column values in the file. You can configure these characters using the Manage System Configuration function. You set the wrap character using the CSV import wrap char parameter. And the separator using the CSV import separator parameter. You only need to set the separator if you want to specify a custom separator other than the pipe separator that CDS expects by default. The final thing to check is that CDS is configured to send IT map messages to the destination country. For more details, see the CDS configuration for IT map generation video or the CDS product documentation. Now that we've configured CSV import, let's import some files into CDS. First, let's look at the format of the files we can import. Starting from CDS version 2020 SP1, there are two file formats you can import a legacy format used by earlier versions of CDS, and a new format. This file is in the legacy format. It has a fixed structure and fields corresponding to all ITMAT mandatory fields, but the file cannot include all possible ITMAT fields. The file can include headers or not, but if an import file has no headers, the import job will assume it's in the legacy format. The new format is more flexible. It has a header defining each column by name, and supports all possible IT mapped fields. The columns in the header must match the names of the fields that can be defined during a Create or Update Declaration API call. The columns may be in any order since the data will be parsed based on the headers. The most important thing to note is that a CSV file in the new format must be imported with a header. Note that although this function specifically mentions CSV files, you can actually import from files with either a .csv or a .txt extension. Let's place our files in the source folder configured for the job. If the import outbound data from CSV job is defined to run every minute, one minute after placing the files in the import folder, the job runs and picks the files up. 
there is no limit to the number of declarations per file or the number of files which can be imported. All files placed in the source folder will be imported into CDS when the job runs. We can see that the imported files were imported successfully because they were moved to the backup folder. We will now log into CDS as a postal operator and go to the search declarations function to find the imported declaration. We will enter the declaration ID imported from the file. We also need to select outbound as only outbound declarations are imported. We can see the imported declarations listed here. We have successfully imported CSV files into CDS. Now let's see what happens when there is an import error. It's important to note that when importing a CSV file in the new format, all column names must be valid. If there is an invalid or wrongly named column, the entire file will not be imported and will be moved to the error folder within the job folder. You must correct the column name, place the file in the source folder and import it again. So if you're importing files created by another system where customers create declarations to generate IT mat, you need to check the column names are correct to avoid generating an error. Let's open up our new format import file and change one of the headers to an invalid name to generate an import error. At the specified import interval, the import job runs and we can now see our import file has been moved to the error folder. We can check the source of the error by using the view logs function in CDS. We enter today's date and look for a CSV import log entry. In this case, we can see that a header was incorrectly specified. If we go back to the file and correct the header, then move the file back to the main job folder, We can now see it's imported successfully. If you find that your file has moved to the error folder but you cannot find an entry in the CDS log, you can also try to check the Windows Event Viewer in case there are problems with the CDS service, for example. You can now have a go at importing outbound declarations into CDS yourself using the CSV files linked in the description below to start you off.